Hey Gender Queer Chat, Joe here. Um, I'm probably going to make this video in several small chunks and um, because it's a lot of different questions and there's things I want to show you. Like I'm gonna, at some point I'm going to have to play my guitar, I'm going to have to take it to my fridge and I may or may not get that done today. So you may see me in a different outfit and you, <clears throat> I may have a different voice, but that's okay. So what we're doing this week is just answering a series of interesting questions. So. Uh, for the last eight years, um, I have been a computer technician. That is my official job title, computer technician at a school board. So I am, uh, I went to college for something called networking and hardware, which means I learned how to um, network computers and repair or troubleshoot hardware issues. I'm not really a software genius. I'm not a net, like a programming genius. We had to take some programming classes. I've done HTML in my life. I used to do web pages for fun. Um, but I don't really, you know, fix computers like I used to. Um, my skill set is really old. <laughs> like I said, I graduated in 2002. And um, what I do at work is very rote. It's very rote. <laughs> I re-image a lot of computers um, using a, like a like a LAN, a, a local area network, and I blast like a Windows XP, yeah, we're that old, image onto workstations for um, elementary and secondary classrooms. Uh, some of the job is challenging insofar as I do get to use my noodle on occasion to troubleshoot problems. A lot of it, the wiring is fun. The wire, um, troubleshooting networking problems is a challenge because sometimes, you know, a mouse chews through the network cable, you know, in the ceiling or sometimes, um, you know, the fiber wire is, is problematic and I don't know. It's neat. You kind of, I have tools. I, I have tools on my job. It's also the job requires a car and I live, I basically work out of my car. So I have 14 schools that I maintain. I think we're a department of about 20 people. Wow, there's less than that now. And there's only about 120 schools that we take care of, but I'm only responsible for a small cluster of them. Um, you hear me complain a lot about my job. It's not the job itself. The job itself is kind of boring, but it's it pays well, and it's what I went to school for. Um, it's the politics and the corruption of working for municipal government. Okay, I'm kind of enjoying this one because... Uh, well, first off, I get to show you, yes, indeed, Canadians have bagged milk. It's true. Um, so here's what's in my fridge. Salad fixings, yogurt, mushrooms, a lot of condiments. Um, if we go down... Ah! Feta cheese. More feta, more feta. More yogurt. More lettuce. There is beer. Don't ask me why there's beer. I don't. Oh, because I had a party last week for my birthday. Barbecue sauce, cheese, butter. Yeah. And on the door, lemon juice, lime juice, jams, sauces. Actually, this is kind of funny because I haven't used it in forever. This is. Um. <laughs> that is a. Uh, Allergy serum. I used to take allergy shots. And then my freezer. Yeah. Veggie burgers. More veggie burgers. Ice cream. Birthday cake. Uh, edamame. This is edamame. My favorite thing in the whole wide world. More Eve's products. These are all vegetarian meats. And a, one of these cups that you freeze. I just got them at Value Village. And I can have a cold drink. Oh, Morningstar brand. That's the American brand of vegetarian products that I have to go cross-border to get. Okay, uh, the next question is, what do you do for fun? And hopefully this will focus. Can you see my hoarded uh, items? I extreme coupon. Yes, I do. I admit it. See, I have like three of everything or five of everything or 20 of everything. Yeah, I'll just back up here. This is the funniest one of all. This box is full of things like toothpaste and toiletry items. I think in here is razors too, which is hysterically funny in light of the fact that I don't shave. But yeah, this is all extreme couponed stuff that I will probably give to a food bank um, because I got it for free. 
yeah, so all of that stuff I got for either free or under 50 cents. That's sort of my extreme couponing rule. So if you watch that stupid show, Extreme Couponing, I'm one of them. That is what I do for fun, I'll admit it. I, um, I'm a kind of, little bit of a compulsive shopper, I'll admit it. And um, because I don't need a damn thing, I am fully stocked on every level. Um, and I like to go cross-border because um, Americans have some really interesting stuff that Canadians just don't have. I have gotten into extreme couponing and with all the stuff that I buy I typically do give it to a food bank so that's a lot of fun for me. Okay the next question is what is your favorite pair of underpants? Which I don't even like the word underpants. I call it underwear. Um, I feel weird saying underpants. It's almost like when you're genderqueer and, you and you're female bodied and you have to talk about your period and you really don't want to and the word period just doesn't roll off your tongue that easy. Anyway. Um, I wear men's underwear for many, many years. It's much better made. Much better made. Um, but then I didn't for a number of years and I've only recently gotten back into it. So I just bought uh, Fruit of the Loom just recently. And they are lovely. And they have that big pouch, right? Like, like men's underwear does. And they're so comfortable and they're so... Solid, like they're solidly made. Women's underwear is flimsy little, flimsy little, thin, paper thin shite, which is, doesn't take, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. That's my favorite pair of underwear these days. Okay, one of the questions was, do you play any instruments? And um, I can't believe I've been on this channel for, I don't know, almost a year maybe? Was it last October? And it's August right now and I've never told you guys this and part of the thing is that I grew up in a very very musical family and they're all better than me I'm the worst so it's not something I'm very confident about even though I'm a lot better than I probably know I'm better than I think I am and I know I'm not bad but because I'm not as good as everyone else in my family and I grew up in a family with like three guitar players and two guitars I never had an opportunity to practice a lot so anyway do I play an instrument yes I play guitar I'll just play you a little bit. <laughs> Let's start over. So there you go. That was Neil Young's Needle in the Damage done. Not great. Haven't practiced in a while. Scr strings need replacing. But yes. And I play a bit of piano and a bit of um, harmonica and mandolin. And a bit of, yeah. And I sing. My biggest thing is that I sing. But you don't hear me sing very often again. Karaoke. Um, what is under your bed? And I am not going to show you what's under my bed because my room is a pigsty. But under my bed. I just got a new bed and um, prior to that I didn't really have room under my bed, but this bed, the way I put it together, it's, it's like tons, I can crawl under my bed. That's how big it is. And all that's under there right now is a big cardboard box turned on its side and a blanket for the cats um, and some dust bunnies. What books have you read recently? And um, I actually don't read very often. I read a lot online of articles. I used to read books. Um, I used to be a library technician for many, many years. I read books. I was reading when I was three years old. I mean, the library and me were like this, and that's how I got in the field. However, um, the last book I read, I just got an e-reader, e a Sony e-reader, a second-hand one, and I put Amy Chua's uh, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. I read that. It was very good. I quite enjoyed it. Um, I'm reading Sam Harris's um, the, Lands the Moral Landscape. I'm a huge Sam Harris fan. It's heavy reading. Um, it's not for the faint of heart, so that's, I'm sort of halfway to that. And then I'm also reading, is it here? No, it must be elsewhere. A book on hiking, on backcountry hiking. Um, I tend to read a lot of non-fic. I'm not, I'm not a fiction fan. And if I do read anything, it's memoirs, like um, Amy Chua's book, or uh, just non-fiction in general. That's what I read. Okay, I'm probably going to cut this all to hell, but I don't know if you can see on my belly button, right there is a scar. Yes, right there. But I just showed you a little glimpse of my, I think it was upside down even, oh well. 
of um, a scar on my navel, which is a very small, um, which is a very small scar that uh, was from a laparoscopic surgical procedure I had, which was, of course, my tubal ligation. And that was a big deal for me. That's actually really the only surgery I've ever had uh, with general anesthetic. That's when they knock you out. Um, I've had like my wisdom teeth removed and some medical tests done where they put like a tube down my throat. And <clears throat> But uh, this was the biggie and it's the one that resulted in a scar. And I'm very, very pleased about it. I love that scar because it indicates I'm sterile and that's, that's what I wanted. So that was from 1998 or 99. I think I may have had the surgery in 99. Yeah, so it's been a while. I'm not going to answer that question. I will tell you that throughout my life, my goal was to travel, was to visit, and, and I know that making goals that don't have concrete and achievable outcomes is, is useless. You need to have achievable outcomes, and that usually requires numbers like or specific places. So for me, there were 50 states, 10 provinces, and 3 territories, and I wanted to visit them all before I died. So as you may have heard in previous videos, because I ramble on about it quite a bit, and I know I do, but it's something of which I'm very proud. I have visited, in the last 5 years really, <laughs> uh, 49 of 50 states, 9 of 10 provinces, and 2 of 3 territories. So I only have one of each left to see before I die, but I must. So Newfoundland is I'm coming your way sometime soon, and Hawaii. And Northwest Territories proper are the three that I have left. Um, some other things that I want to do before I die is definitely get published properly. I've been a writer all my life. I've, I'm self-published on, online constantly. I've been published in various um, newspapers and stuff like that. But I have never published a book. And I know book has gone the way of the dinosaur. I mean, I could technically just write something, throw it in PDF, and it could be an ebook. But I really, really, really want to be published. And that is to say make money, like have something I've written be purchased. Some other far-flung dream of mine was to win the Order of Canada, which is, I don't even know what you have to do to win that. Seriously, I just think I want it because I love, I'm a proud Canadian and I would like, and I think that I have a lot to offer. And I think that if I say were to write a bestseller or something and I should, you know, win the Order of Canada. There you go. Some things I need to do before I die. What is the last video you made on your personal channel? So if anybody um, wants to answer that, you feel free or just answer me in the comments. Um, I just made a video last night about atheism and morality, talking about Michael Vick. Honestly, that was that's what's on my channel. That's the most recent upload to my personal channel, Monty Holly. If you um, go to that channel, there's all kinds of crazy shit on that channel. <laughs> I'm an extreme couponer. You'll see a lot of that on my channel. You'll see travel. It's me driving a transport truck. There's me dancing, ballroom dancing at a street festival. Um, there's me putting on a sari that's got half a million hits. I shit you not. Um, yeah, and then a lot on religion, a lot on gender, and a lot on atheism. So there you go. Atheism and morality. Debunking the Santa myth, I think I threw in there too. Have a great night, you guys. Most recently, I have, I'm a vegetarian, um, and I never ate properly for most of my life. I've only just, in my 30s, probably discovered, you know, rice and beans and this sort of thing. I think I just ate crap, like french fries and craft dinner and stuff like that for a good chunk of my life. But I now make a kick in lentil soup. So I make lentil soup, and I should, actually, if I'm making it later, I will bring the video camera in and show. But it's basically an onion, some turmeric, some lentils and soup base. Um, there's really nothing to it. It's so simple. It's really so simple. It's shocking. And at the end you squirt lemon juice in it. Um, the other thing that I am known for in my circles is mulligatawny soup, which is an Indian uh, uh, curry soup full of, um, actually lentils are in there too, and um, garam masala and coriander and curry and uh, cumin and tons of vegetables. It's very delicious. My favorite food is probably, and the other one, oh yes, my favorite food is the chickpea. So falafels or just chickpea salads or chickpeas, hummus. And um, there's a wicked dish that I'm going to just tell you quick. It's chickpeas, spinach, and tomatoes in a mild curry and then uh, lemon juice at the end. So you just actually squirt um, some gar put some garlic and oil or whatever in a pan and a little bit of maybe red curry if you've got it. Um, 
and then reduce the spinach like a huge bag of spinach will reduce down to nothing so to put the whole bag of spinach in and a little bit of water and reduce it reduce it reduce it and add a can of rinsed chickpeas and a chopped up tomato and simmer it and then just squirt lemon juice on at the end that is freaking delicious i eat that all the time okay